Thank you very much, Rabbi Kran, for your powerful words. And as I was sending the invitation and I put the date, I said, oops, this is a Saturday and uh, it's going to be very difficult. We need to have a really Friday, Saturday, Sunday weekend now. <laughs> Thank God uh, Jews and Sikhs don't pick any day, <laughs> otherwise we wouldn't be working the whole week. But thank you very much for coming on this day and giving us such a powerful statement. Uh, our next speaker is Pramod Mathur, who's kind of going to share with us the Hindu perspective. Uh, I have worked with, uh, uh, with uh, Mr. Mathur on other forums, but this is the first time you are speaking at the Delaware Council event. Welcome, and I hope that this becomes a habit. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Pramod Mathur. I also go by Paul, so you can call me Paul if that's easier. Um, I thank uh, Dr. Khan and, and the whole team for giving me the opportunity to uh, take a few minutes to provide a Hindu perspective on social justice. The Hindu tradition is a tradition that is also referred to as Sanatan Dharma. And what Sanatan Dharma means, a way of life. And so the Hindu tradition, of course, talks about God, uh, how we can approach God. It talks about divinity and the principles of divinity. But it also talks about how we should conduct our lives. What is expected with respect to our behavior and our values and our culture and how we interact with each other. So, as it pertains to the topic of social justice, the Hindu tradition has basically two or three principles, which I'll elaborate here uh, very briefly. Uh, the first principle is around dharma. Uh, dharma, the word dharma actually loses in translation, but what dharma means is a collection of rights and duties along the path of righteousness. So everyone is expected to know what their dharma is. And there was mentioned earlier about having the right balance between uh, the rights and the duties. Yes, understanding what your rights are and what your duties are under all circumstances and having the right balance of both of them is expected in the Hindu tradition. And there's a lot of description uh, with respect to understanding what your duties are. Because we have many roles that we play in society, right? We have duties towards our family. We have duties towards our occupation. And we have duties towards our society. For all circumstances, we need to understand what those duties are, and we need to understand what our rights are and we need to have the right balance between the two. So that's the first principle. The second principle is around karma. Uh, now karma means action, and I think the word karma has also made its way into the, uh, <laughs> into the English dictionary. And the Hindu tradition talks a lot about the law of karma. In other words, what are the principles by which we should be acting and performing our deeds and actions throughout our life. There are some basic principles. And the law of karma is elaborated at great length, for example, in the Bhagavad Gita, which is, the Gita is the central scripture of Hinduism. And the Lord talks about not just what actions we must do, but also the intent and the attitude with which those actions are performed. Karumarnya vadhikara ste ma faleshu kadachan yagyar tharth karmano nyatra loko yam karma bandana yogastha kuru karmani sangam tayaktva dhananjaya. These are some of the many, many verses that talk about the principles of the law of karma. You have certain rights you have a duty towards all these different roles that you play in your life, 
You must learn how to perform them all the time to the best of your ability. You need to have a sense of discrimination between right and wrong. Balance difficult circumstances. So that's principle number two. Principle number three is around how we interact and deal with other people. And the message there is around compassion and tolerance. The scripture says that not everybody is born with the same strengths and the same weaknesses. Some people are better at skill X. Some people are better at skill Y. Some people have this weakness. Some people have that weakness. We need to remove the hierarchy associated with these strengths and weaknesses. We need to understand that everybody is born in a different way with different attributes, and the only way society can function smoothly is if we allow all those different skills and attributes to be nurtured and to complement each other for the betterment of society. So the scripture talks about four different classes, uh, different skills and attributes. Again, there is no hierarchy. Our role is to understand how we fit and how we can maximize the performance of our duty, given our rights, without violating somebody else's rights. The divinity that resides in you also is the same divinity that resides in all other beings. If we look at it that way, the aspects of tolerance and compassion will automatically begin to flow. So, uh, again, to summarize, the Hindu tradition talks about three basic principles, and if those principles are followed, there's no opportunity for social injustice. There's no opportunity for incongruity. And those principles are, number one, follow your dharma. Follow the path of righteousness as it pertains to your duties and your rights. That's number one. Number two, follow the principles of the law of karma. These are the guidelines by which you should be acting. What actions to do, with what attitude, and with what intent. That's principle number two. And principle number three, the rules around which you should be interacting with others. Where you deal with everybody with compassion and tolerance. You understand different skills and attributes. And we work together to extract those strengths of everybody, which are different, for the betterment of society. If we can do all those things, then there's no opportunity for social injustice. There's no opportunity for in, any incongruity in society. Thank you very much. Haryom Tatsap. Thank you very much, Mr. Pramod Mathura. Our next speaker is Charanjit. Minhas from the Sikh Gurdwara is going to speak on the Sikh perspective on social justice. For those of us who participate in interfaith dialogues, we see each other as brothers. But in this case, Charanjit is my elder brother because he invited me first to his Gurdwara to speak before I could return the favor. So thank you very much for joining with us, Charanjit. کیا اسی لیے تقدیر نے چنوائے تھے تن کے بن جائے نشے من اور کوئی آگ لگا دے لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین ست شری اکال گریٹنگس ٹو آل دا کپلیٹ دیٹ آئی جسٹ ریسائٹیڈ مینس دیٹ از دس دا ریزن آئی ڈیڈ دا آل دا لیور سو دیٹ When the mansion is ready, somebody can come and put it on fire. This couplet of the poet very beautifully sums up the political activism for social accomplishment in India's Punjab in 1980s. What started to be a agitation, peaceful and just 
for social justice accomplishment was hijacked by a great orator though he was an illiterate a villager but somebody who had a great memory and could very effectively quote verses from six holy book guru granth sahib and was able to be pub the passions of young boys who took to militancy and the result was that government of india attacked the holiest sikh shrine which became the reason why the then prime minister of india mrs indira gandhi was assassinated by her sikh security guards and that became the reason for rape and killing of thousands of innocent Sikhs in New Delhi and other parts of India. The downfall of Punjab, where majority of the population is Sikhs, that that was set off at that time, has not stopped. Whenever I am quoting this example from my experience, because. i was also a teenager in 1980s living in that same state of punjab there is huge responsibility not only for the leaders or the government but also for the members of the community of the religion to ensure that the agenda for social justice is not hijacked by the people who want fame or some other things which are not for the good of the community when sikhs before that one sikh would ride a bus or go to a place where everybody is a is not everybody gathered over there is not a sikh people used to feel
the critical activism for that social justice is is apparent not only in the verses, but I'll tell you, which is, would be much easier for you to understand, is the physical manifestations of that. If you see a picture of Golden Temple, or any one of you who has had or may have the opportunity to visit Amritsar, visit Golden Temple, it has four doors. Everybody has the equal privilege without any discrimination on gender, race, color, geography, or the direction from which they are coming, what their caste or class is. And when you visit a Gurdwara, there are two things, Sangat and Pangat. Sangat is congregation, Pangat is when they sit in the community kitchen to eat. So everybody sits on the same floor and does not matter. They are Sikh, they are man, woman, what religion they are from, what caste they are from, what class they are from. And every Sikh prayer ends with Nanak Naam Chardi Kala Tere Pane Sarvata Pala, which means, O oh Nanak, God's remembrance meditation, focus on his name, is such a glorious art that you will only wish the well-being of whole universe. Not of only Sikhs, not of brothers and sisters gathered here, or in Newark, or Delaware, or in, on this earth, but whole of universe, including non-living things and living things. So with that prayer, with that uh, wish, I end my remarks. Nanak Naam Chardi Kala Tere Pane Sravadda Pala. Thank you very much.